everyone welcome back to another video so nice to see you here on my channel hope you're all having a wonderful day today we are going to be talking about money and finance something I don't really talk about at all on my channel but I wanted to give you some insight on how I budget and save my money while on a contract if you are new here, I work on a cruise ship. I am one of the entertainers on board, so I'm a professional figure skater, and I'm currently working on the Voyager of the Seas. So I thought this video would be informative and helpful to anyone who might be considering working on a ship, or even if you're not working on a ship, maybe it is interesting to learn. So I'm gonna be answering a bunch of your questions, and I also made a list of things I wanted to go over. I've also been wanting to film a what I spend in a week, just to give you guys sort of an idea of how much I spend on any given week working on the ship. So that might be a video down the road. I haven't done it yet. So if you want to see that, let me know. It's really rocky today and the anchor seems to keep banging against the ship. So if you hear a bit of noise, just that's what it is. It's the ship being loud. I'm also at the front of the ship. So make sure to follow me on Instagram if you're not already. I post daily on there updates on my life, skating, the ship, travel, fashion, the whole nine yards. So follow me on there if you're not already. And without further ado, let's jump right on into it. Something most of you probably don't know about me is that I love to save my money. It is very hard for me to spend. I mean, I love to shop. I love buying groceries. And I mean, who doesn't love to buy new things? However, I am quite frugal when it comes to spending on myself. It is about 10 times easier for me to spend on somebody else than it is to buy myself something. So I personally view that as an advantage because it makes saving so much easier for me. I'm never really tempted to spend my paycheck the second that it hits the bank. I like to just store it and let it build. So saving is something that definitely comes easier to me, maybe not for everyone else, but for me personally, I really like to save. That being said, even though I like to save my money, I'm not completely strict with myself. So I kind of set a mental goal on how much I want to save. But if there's an opportunity or an experience that I want to do and it's going to go over that budget one week, that is okay because life is about the experiences you have and the memories you make rather than how much money you have. I would much rather spend my money on an activity of some sort rather than a physical item. So the best way for me personally to save my money on the ship and to keep track of it is I actually write down my spending log for every single day on board. I did not start this right at the beginning of the contract, but a few months in I decided I wanted to keep an eye on how much of my paycheck I was spending per week. This contract, I definitely spended more than I typically would just because we were in Europe and I wanted to do everything there was to see. I was definitely more lenient and easygoing with spending my money when we were in like Stockholm and Helsinki and things like that. But I did keep a tally of what I spent every single day on what and that gave me a really good path to see the percentage that I was saving versus spending. Ideally for myself, I want to save about 90% of my paycheck from a contract. So that means I only have about 10% spending. I would probably estimate this contract I have saved about 80% or maybe 75% and spent 25%, which I still think is really good, but my goal on the last three contracts was save 90, spend 10%. There are so many benefits to working on board a cruise ship because you can definitely save your money if you are smart about it. There are so many different things that we do not have to pay for and I wanted to just touch on a few of those things because some of them are obvious and some are less obvious. So. The biggest money saver is the fact that we do not have to pay for our room and board. So when we live on the ship, we don't have to pay for our rooms. They are provided for us, so it's free living accommodations. On top of that, our transportation to and from a contract is also paid for us, so we do not have to book anything and we don't have to pay a penny. The only thing we do have to pay for when it comes to traveling is our luggage if it goes over the like $70 allowance we have so most 
airlines typically charge $35 per checked bag. If you have two, you're set. If it's overweight, then you'll have to pay the extra. Another huge money saver that I have mentioned before, but I want to touch on again is food. We do not have to pay for any of the food we eat while we are working on board. So that means we can eat in the staff mess or the crew mess. What that is, is basically a cafeteria for the crew members on board. On the Oasis class ships, there is only one mess and it is on deck two. On the smaller class ships, such as Voyager class, there is two messes. So one on deck two and one on deck five. I typically eat at the staff mess, but again, we don't have to pay for any of the food. Because we don't pay for the food, the quality is not always the best. So if you want to have a nicer meal, we can also go to the Windjammer as performers, and we can also go to the specialty restaurants, but that will cost money. For the Windjammer, we do not have to pay, we just have to make a reservation. At least that's the rules as of right now on board, but the specialty restaurants we have to pay with our crew discount. The discount definitely goes a long way because we can also use that crew discount for the shops on board, for the bars on board, so we can save money there. Laundry is also included on board, so that's another free amenity. We do have to pay for our own laundry detergent and fabric softener, but to actually use the washer and dryer machines, it is free, which is amazing again. That can definitely get really pricey, so we save a lot of money there. I just buy the little Tide Pods when it comes to doing my laundry. I just find it's the easiest and most convenient one on board. We do also have access to the crew and guest gyms, which is another big money saver. Gym memberships can be $20 to $30 a month, so the fact that we have access to a gym for free whenever we want is amazing, and I take full, full advantage of that. As a skater on board, I do have access to Studio B and I can skate whenever I want at no charge, which is amazing again because ice time can get expensive at home. So I definitely take advantage of the open ice whenever I can. There are recreational areas. So there is a pool table, a foosball table, and they do also have PlayStation for the crew members to use. It is also free. There's some music equipment also set up in this crew rec area, like drums, two guitars, like a bass guitar and an electric guitar, and maybe a keyboard. We can use those for free. I'm not musically gifted, so I stay away from those. But I did try the drums once. Linen is another free amenity, so we can go and switch our sheets out and our towels whenever needed, and it's free as well. I personally like to wash my own sheets so that I'm not swapping out every couple days or week. Those are all the things that are included within our contract that we do not have to pay for. Now moving on to something that does cost money that's very expensive and that is Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is, and I'm just going to be honest, completely overpriced on board. I do not pay a penny for Wi-Fi because I think it's a waste of money. It is $4 per 60 minutes for the crew members on board and the Wi-Fi is so slow I cannot even describe to you how slow it is. If you've ever cruised, you know that the Wi-Fi can be spotty, but imagine maybe a third as fast for the crew members. We get less of a bandwidth, so it could take 10 to 20 minutes to load one Instagram post. So I just choose not to purchase it. That being said, I do work the Wi-Fi desk, so I basically work for my minutes. So I am paid in Wi-Fi minutes when I help out. So I do get Wi-Fi when I'm working on board. I just don't pay for it. I'm paid in minutes, if you will. So I am saving money because I'm not spending on Wi-Fi, but I'm still getting the minutes, which is really nice. Another thing that we do have to pay for is alcohol. So we can drink at the guest bars around the ship in the guest areas but it will be full price minus our crew discount. So that can definitely add up. I don't typically order any drinks out in guest areas just because it is pricey, but we do have a crew bar for the crew members and the prices are very different there. So the prices at the crew bar are amazing. I still like to buy my own alcohol, keep it in the room, and then just make a drink to go to back deck. However, you can buy at the bar there. I want to say it's like $2.50 or $3 for a mixed drink and $1.75 for a beer. So it's definitely less expensive than any typical bar or restaurant you'd be 
at on land which is amazing but like I said I like to just make my own drink because I feel like it saves me more money in the long run we do also have a convenience kind of store on board it's called slop chest and there we can buy snacks um, other toiletries things like that pop energy drinks popcorn chips ramen noodles candies chocolates all that kind of stuff it's not very big but we do have to pay for whatever we buy there it's not free think of a little snack bar in a hotel lobby that's kind of what slop chest is like but definitely bigger we do also have a spa on board and we are allowed to use that so we can get our nails done we can get massages haircut hair colored all of that that is an extra fee for the crew members so it's not free we do have to pay for it but again, we get to use our crew discount. I have never gone there actually. I got my gel nails removed one time on my last contract, but that's the only time I've ever used the spa. So even though it is attached to the gym, it will be a separate fee. So now that I've listed what's free and what we have to pay for, there are a few ways, of course, you can be smart about saving more money. So the biggest thing that saved me this contract was eating before I get off the ship. So we had port days almost every single day of the cruise. If it was a seven day cruise, we had six port days and one sea day, which means a lot of money can be spent when you're off in port the entire day. So what I like to do a lot of times is I would wake up for breakfast and then get off the ship. Or if it was a later arrival, I would eat breakfast and lunch and then get off the ship. Sometimes when we had an overnight in a port, I'd eat breakfast, get off for the day and have a light lunch, like a snack, and come back for dinner before going back out. So that definitely saved me a lot of money, but I do love to eat and there were so many amazing vegan and vegetarian restaurants in these ports. So I definitely did spend money on food. I'm not going to say I didn't. I really enjoyed having a nice lunch with friends. It's a whole experience in my opinion. So. I was very happy to spend money on that. Another thing I like to do when I got off the ship on a poor day was pack a snack because I'm literally always hungry. So even if I ate before getting off the ship, chances are I'd get hungry an hour later. And instead of going to a store and buying something, I just brought something from off the ship. So we're not allowed to bring like fruit or vegetables off, but if I had a granola bar or a pack of crackers, something like that, I would bring that off with me and that would help tie me over. There are also a ton of free activities you can do in a port. You just have to do your research. So I actually did a video. I spent $0 for 24 hours in Helsinki. So you just have to do your research and kind of get creative because you don't have to spend money to have fun. Something else I do to save some money is I prepare my own coffee in the cabin. So I have a cold brew maker and I also have instant coffee. So I like to make a coffee either to have in the cabin or to bring with me if I'm on the go rather than go to the crew bar and buy a coffee. Even though it's not expensive, it still does add up if you're paying for a coffee every single day. Coffee on board for crew members is probably like anywhere from two to three fifty. And once again, I'm just going to touch upon the employee discount or crew discount. We do get a discount when we are spending money on board, which does save us a little bit of money. I did have you guys send in some questions regarding money, finance, budgeting. So I'm going to answer a few of those and try to get through as many as I can. Do you find yourself spending more or less money since you're at sea? Is it easier to save money or not? I would say it's a lot easier to save money when you're on the ship because you have access to a lot of things that are free. And I don't know, I'm not tempted to run to Starbucks every single day like I am when I'm home. What do you spend the most money on while you're on a contract? Is it different from what you spend most on when you're home between contracts? I'd say what I spend the most on between contracts is coffee. I love to buy coffee when I'm home. I just love Starbucks. And when I'm here, I spend the most money on food, at least this contract specifically. But again, I was not spending money on every single meal, it's just every so often I was treating myself to a nice, healthy, nourished meal. Does your salary change on different contracts or does it stay the same? My personal salary does increase every single contract. I want to say that's the same for other departments as well. It goes up $100 every single contract. What are the options and costs of getting your hair cut on the ship as a crew member? So like I said, you can either go to the spa and get a haircut or there are a few other crew members around the ship that do haircuts and they charge a lot less than the spa would. I want to say a boy's haircut on the ship is $27. 
at the spa and I know that there are some crew members that will charge like five dollars ten dollars how do you manage to save money and not splurge on something for me if I want to spend a lot of money on something I want to be very sure of it so if there's something I feel a really strong urge to buy I don't buy it then and if I keep thinking about it for the following weeks then I know I really want it and then I can reconsider if it's worth spending the money on or not but if there's something that I like impulsively in the moment and I don't think about it the next day chances are I didn't I didn't really want it do these cruise lines have a 401k are you saving some money in the market for retirement I am saving for retirement I do have a retirement fund started already I started that last year but the company does not have a 401k how does insurance work shipboard do you have to buy different coverage between contracts since you're us based you keep a car at home insurance is covered for us while we are on board i'm still on my parents insurance until i'm 26 so i have one more year left then i have to pay for my own so i have insurance when i'm home but i'm also covered by the company while i am on a contract and I don't personally have a car right now. I used to have a car, it was a lease when I was in college, but I do not have a car anymore. There's just no need because I'm not home long enough for it to really be worth it. I would just be paying for the lease and not even use it. It would just be sitting in the driveway. So that is all the questions I'm gonna answer for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative and gave you some insight. If you are looking to work on a cruise ship or you're just interested to know if you want to see more kind of money related videos regarding ship life let me know or any specific video requests you have i'm always open to new things but i really appreciate you guys watching this thank you once again for all your love and support and thank you to all of you i've gotten to meet this contract it has been such a blessing so really appreciate each and every one of you and I love you to the moon and back. Thank you once again. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.